Well, air gunners, the questions come up a lot of times, and that is, can you get quality glass for under 250 bucks? And if you're not looking for specific purposes, well, I believe you can. Today's show is brought to you in part by Air Guns of Arizona, High Pressure Pneumatics, Michigan's premier air gun shop, Air Force Air Guns, and Rapid Air Works. You'll find links to these and more in the descriptions down below. Hey, welcome back to the show. Today we'll be taking a close look at the new $230 first focal plane scope from Discovery Optics. Now, I'm gonna preface all this, and to be fair, six to 24 by 50 SFIR first focal plane scope isn't gonna be your first choice if you're looking for something like field target or where you're gonna have a lot of extreme demands placed on your scope. I wouldn't take it up to Alaska to go hunt moose. However, this scope is ideal for those of you looking for a budget-friendly scope to get plinking at the range, maybe hunting small game, you know, with your air guns. And don't forget, this scope actually comes with a lot of accessories, including flip-up lens cap, your Picatinny rings, and it is standard with a lifetime warranty that's transferable without a receipt. Now, matter of fact, I enjoyed this scope that I have here so much that I've actually used it on two of my most recent reviews. Now, the 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope, it worked great on both my Caliber Gun Cricket 2 review as well as the Crossman Prospect review in 22 caliber. So, if you want to take a closer look at those, you can see some scope through footage of me shooting, maybe even check out the accuracy on those two products feel free to click, well, the link you see right up here, or I'll put them down below in the description. So what do I actually like about this scope? Well, there's a lot of things. First and foremost, it has a decent field of view at 100 yards, coming in at just over 19 feet at those 100 yards. And that's when you're at 6X. If you close in to its maximum 24X, well, you're gonna reduce that range of view to five feet for that maximum magnification. Not too bad for $230. The glass in this scope, well, to be honest, it surprised me. It was clear enough that I was able to get some decent footage while shooting both of those air guns and decent enough for those reviews. So very happy with that, especially for this price point. Also, it has a 50 millimeter objective up here, which is gonna allow plenty of light, especially if you're shooting down at the range. And to be honest, this scope appeared more clear than some other scopes that I've used when using a scope camera. So, you know, all in all, not bad. Also, what else do you get? Well, you get the 30 millimeter diameter tube, which is what has become almost a standard in the air gun industry. And we actually see the industry moving or shifting a little bit to the 34 millimeter, but 30 millimeter is plenty, especially at that price point of $230. Now the reticle, the reticle is nice, giving you plenty of holdover measurements. It is a lighted reticle, uses that standard uh, button battery that you see in all the scopes and it's first focal plane. For me, that's huge. I love a first focal plane scope because that means I'm not going to have to memorize or write down all of my different holdovers for different magnifications. That holdover point, my impact point for that various yardage is going to remain the same depending on if I'm on 6X or in this case, all the way on 24X. Let's talk about the turrets now. This has very positive clicks and there's even a zero stop included at the top here on this vertical turret. So for that up and down, so if you want to dial your shots, you can absolutely do that. The top turret and the side turret though are limited to 17 MRADs. So when you do set up the scope, if you happen to pick one up, you're going to want to get it zeroed for your zero, whatever that distance is, so you can get the most movement up and down out of the turrets left and right before you run out of room. So keep that in mind, get that scope optically zeroed for your zeroed shot and you should be all right, especially if you're talking about typical air gun distances, 50 to 100 yards, I'd say, you're gonna be fine. If you're looking to go out past that, you're gonna definitely need some adjustable rings and I probably would go with a different scope for those further extreme distances. 
But for that typical air gunner, you're gonna be fine. One of the downsides of the scope are some of the mechanical pieces other than the turrets. The turrets are very smooth, but when we're talking about the focus ring here on the side, side focus wheel, it's a little bit stiffer than I might like. And also the zoom ring on the side, it's definitely very stiff. Now you're not gonna bump it out of place, but even if you did, it's first focal plane, so it wouldn't be something to worry about. I would like to see these just be a little bit smoother, but then again, how often are you messing with the, you know, with the zoom factor on your scope? Kind of one of those things that when you set it, you forget it. But uh, you know, something I do want you to keep in mind. Now, I did do a simple box test, and I have to preface this box test by telling you I sent it on a Athlon tripod that's used for hunting. Great little tripod, but you're not going to get the most stability out of it. I was very pleased with both the up and down movement, left and right, held zero under a whole bunch of different tests I was doing, and even running those turrets to the extreme, it would hold zero. Now you will notice on the edges, you'll take a look at that reticle. As I'm going to the extremes, you'll see it kind of floats or it kind of curves a little bit as it moves. And that's because scopes are built on a tube in tube system. And when you adjust the turrets, you're adjusting the internal tube. So when it hits the outside of the external tube or the main body here, it's riding that. So that's why you see that curvature there. Nothing super unusual. And as a matter of fact, that's why I stated earlier, when you get to those extremes, you don't want to have your scope there on, whether it be a cheaper scope or a more expensive scope, you want to kind of have it optically zeroed and then make some fine tune adjustments with those, those vertical and horizontal scope turrets there. So keep that in mind. So overall guys and girls, this is a good scope for both the beginner and the traditional PCP air gun shooter. The Discovery Scope, the six to 24 by 50, nice scope, good for the money. And especially for those of you who are talking about more traditional air gunning distances. And for those of you who are very well budget conscious. Can't blame you, I am too. Now, since this is an air gun related video, let's end it with just a little bit of shooting with the Crossman Prospect in the Caliber Gun Cricket. We have finally made it down in the range with the Crossman Prospect 22 caliber, a gun that I have been excited to try out since I heard about it coming out in what, January, I think it was at SHOT Show. Fun little air gun, uh, lots of features, got the one half by 20 threaded muzzle down there. And this time I've got an impulse air moderator, which is kind of nice. It has segments so you can adjust the weight at the end of the barrel to really fine tune those harmonics. 3600 PSI, Air cylinder, hand pump friendly, although I would not recommend it. Again, got the quick disconnect on the end. Love that. Uh, cheek riser here. You've got your easy access to your hammer spring adjustment, side lever. Just a nice little air gun for the money. Now, I've got a target down there. I've been uh, getting things dialed in with my Discovery Scope down there at 50 yards. So let's go ahead and put some lead in the barrel and get some lead on the paper down there and see what this air gun can actually do. We are shooting the new Benjamin 22 caliber pellets. Some of you guys probably been wanting to see how they perform before you pick some up. So we figured why not out of a Crossman platform, try the Benjamin pellets at 50 yards. Maybe you get an idea, right? See if they are hunting accurate um, or even better. Let's go ahead, 50 yards. Now I've got, my aim point is much different than my impact point. So don't be surprised when you see that. I'm gonna aim at this little corner of the yellow diamond. And we're gonna look at the aim point and you'll see my impact point is definitely different. Hold on, before I do this, there we go. Let's try that again. So now you'll see my aim point down there is on the yellow diamond, now that we're recording. And you'll see my impact point will come down here somewhere. So let's go ahead, see what we can get do for you with a five shot group. There's one. Uh-oh, went sideways, let's not use that one. Nothing worse than a dented skirt. Oh, goodness.
bit fine. It's a little tight in there for single shot loading, which is what I like to do. Nothing wrong with the magazine, just I like to single shot load. Oh, there we go. Almost hole in hole. Not bad at all. Ooh. A little split in that group down there. Not a fan of that. We're going to have to try this again, maybe. Let's try this fish shot. Okay. So there we go. We got a uh, decent little group. Let's try one more. I just cleaned this barrel not too long ago. So the process of letting in a barrel, that's what you're kind of seeing here maybe. Um, especially when it's spot on clean like we try to do before we shoot these air guns here for the videos. So let's go ahead and shoot on this right corner now. <laughs> That's getting there. That's getting there. Love that. Again, these are the new Benjamin pellets. Really not bad. Very impressive so far. Five shot group, 50 yards with some Benjamin pellets. What? Okay, JTS pellets, 18 grain. Let's find a new target and see what we got. Now, I haven't changed anything with the scope, so zero might be a little bit different with some different pellets, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Let's see what we got. So far, not too different. Did you see that? Um, I can't tell from here, but I'm pretty sure that was hole for hole right there. Hole on hole. Let's see if we can keep it going. Woo! There's three. I'm liking that. That's four. Five. <laughs> now I think it likes the JTS pellets. What do you guys think? Yeah. I got a little breeze now coming from right to left. Yeah, you can see that just went a little bit further to the left, I think, than some of the others. Not bad, though. Man, that's seven. Wow, eight shots. I'm gonna stop. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. If you got questions, leave them down below. But until next time, make sure your trigger pull stays smooth. Those pellets fly straight. And we'll see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.